Hey everyone, I'm Riley from Riley's Workshop. In today's video, I'm going to be upgrading my Grizzly Benchtop Planer. Special thanks to SheerTech, the sponsor of today's video. More on them in a second. Before we get into the video, you probably have a few questions, like how am I upgrading my planer and why am I upgrading my planer? The reason why is because I have some cherry wood that I need to turn into furniture. However, helical heads are much better for planing hardwoods. So I did some research and I came across the company called SheerTech. SheerTech is a company that sells custom cutter heads and stock cutter heads for lots of planers and jointers. They set me up with a super sweet cutter head deal. I can't wait to install it. Let's unbox it. Just a quick disclaimer, this is not my first time opening this box. When it came, I was too excited and opened it anyway. However, I taped it up and this is how I received it. In the box, we have this star head wrench, some bearings, the cutter head itself, an epic sticker, and we have what looks like our blades and a flash drive. To start disassembling my planer, I'm gonna disconnect it from power and then remove the rear dust guard. Next, I'm going to take off the top. Remove the rubber cap on the depth adjustment crank and then unthread the screw underneath the cap. After that, remove the four screws indicated by the arrows. Then remove the handle and the top should slide off easily. Next, we're gonna remove this belt. You can just do that with your finger. And after that, there's a set screw up in here. You might not be able to find it, but if you um, hold down the safety, then you can rotate these by hand. You'll be able to find that set screw. This is gonna pull off, and then we will uh, use a socket to remove that nut, and we'll go from there. To remove this nut, I'm going to put a little bit of tension on the belt by pinching them together and I'm going to put my drill or my impact in forward because this is reverse threads. Put them in forward. Just like that. It's off. Pull here and just twist and gradually that belt is going to come off. There we go. So now that belt is off. It is hooked in there, so I'm just going to leave it there. Now that pulley is going to be trapped. And in. this comes right off. And now our cutter head's right here, so we're going to remove these bolts, and then this whole housing should come out uh, with our safety. we got to remove the safety as well. They sent me two bearings, and now I'm gonna put the bearings on my cutter head. One on the front, one on the back. Little That's one right, on the one front. on the front, one on the back. Mm -hmm. To press on the top bearing, a little trick is that you can use a socket that's just this, um, the size of the inner race and tap it on. If I weren't in such a big hurry, then you can put this whole cutter head in the freezer and it'll shrink the metal a little bit and these bearings would slide right on. But I'm in a rush, so I'm doing it the hard way. Next, I'm gonna put on my keyway and the shaft. 
Okay, done. Just a quick tip, this would have been a lot easier if we had installed that keyway before we put the cutter head in, so you should definitely do that. Now I'm going to reinstall the retaining bracket and the safety. This is gonna slide right in there. Try not to drop the screws like I just did. You can get those started by hand. Now we're going to put on our pulley, making sure we line up our keyway. Now our nut, remember these are our first threads, so we're going to tighten it instead of loosen it. I'm sorry, we're gonna loosen it instead of tighten it. I'm gonna put my belt on. Remember, just line it up, put, get one edge started, and then twist it on. That's on, and to tighten that, I'm going to pinch to give tension like before. Make sure it's in reverse. on there tight. Next is this pulley. Remember, set screw needs to face the flat. So I'm going to rotate this till the flat is facing up. So is our set screw. That's going to slide on and automatically bottom out. Go ahead and tighten her down. Now our last belt that we took off. So next, we are gonna install the blades into the helical cutter head. This must be done after the cutter head is installed in the planer. So that you can see better, I will show you how to install them when the cutter head is not in my planer. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take our blade here and we're gonna set it on there. We have our little indicating mark. Keep track of that, that'll be important later. We're gonna take our screw and start screwing it in. It's really important to make sure that the threads are free of any grease or grime. But before we tighten it down, we're going to push against our block here and push down as well. I'm just gonna tighten it snug for now, but later we'll come back with a torque wrench. For our next blade, we're gonna make sure our indicating mark is in the same general direction. And these are gonna rotate as we go but we're basically just going to do the same thing. Take our screw and our driver, start threading it. And before we get it snug, I'm gonna push back, down, making sure that everything stays centered. And then I'm gonna snug it down. Basically, basically we're, we're just gonna, gonna repeat, repeat these steps and go through the entire steps. cutter head. Sorry for the fan, I know that's kind of noisy. But anyway, now all my metal inserts are here and I'm going to use a torque wrench and torque them to about 50 inch pounds. That, this piece should slide right in. I have the bottom piece of my hand crank here and I'm gonna insert this like so, and just kind of hold that as I set as I set it down. And you can support that from the underside, it makes things a little bit easier. And I can insert and tighten my screws on the four corners. Now the planer is almost fully reassembled. I'm going to check and make sure that everything works like it should. The raise and lower, the lock works. And now we're just going to install our depth adjuster. I'm gonna put it through the hole in the side just like that. I've got a spring in there. I'm going to decompress the spring from the other side. Hopefully my arm doesn't block everything. that down I can get this started and push it just like that now that's seated in there 
and I have a snap ring to put on and then we are done. Let's review how well it cut the wood. This is the figured piece of cherry that I sent through and it feels really good. It's pretty smooth and it went through relatively easy. Moving on to our oak. I have a video of a different oak board that I sent through but this I actually planed yesterday. But anyway, it's all oak and regardless, it did a great job. It feels super smooth and it went through super easily. I'm super happy with this thing and guys, Snipe is basically non-existent. It did super well. Lastly, we have some cedar. The only reason that I plain cedar is because I have a comparison clip from the last YouTube video that I can compare. And honestly, the finishes are just about the same. Cedar's a super soft wood and I didn't expect that much of an improvement, but I would say that it still feels smoother. Okay, we've got a lot to talk about. I'm gonna start off by rating this in four different categories. Installation, price, cut quality, and build quality. As far as installation goes, I'm very happy. It was pretty easy to install and you only need a few tools. Honestly, you don't actually need a torque wrench. It's recommended, but tightening them snug is probably just fine. This honestly can be intimidating, but it wasn't that hard. So for this category, I'm gonna give it a nine out of 10. As far as price goes, honestly, they're expensive. There's no easy way of saying that. However, it is much more cost effective than buying an entirely new planer. Plus, you get four uses out of each blade, and if you were to run over a nail or something, you can just replace the blades that were affected, which is much better than straight blades, which you would have to replace all three, or two, depending on how many your planer has. So for this category, I'm gonna give it a seven out of 10. For cut quality, honestly, it did great. I'm super happy. My only complaint, and guys, it's not even a complaint, I'm just critiquing, is on one of the very figured cherry boards. It left a slightly rougher patch, but Guys, it's nothing that can't come out in a little bit of sanding. And so for this category, I'm gonna give it a nine out of 10. As far as build quality goes, I'm really happy. Guys, it felt super solid when I was assembling it. And honestly, only time will tell how it's gonna hold up, but I'm confident that it's gonna hold up great. So for this category, I'm gonna give it a 10 out of 10. Well, thanks for making it to the end of the video. If you like what you see, go ahead and subscribe. It helps me out a lot and it's free. Now I wanna give a huge thanks to SheerTac for sponsoring this video. Guys, they were super easy to work with and I really enjoyed partnering with them on this video. I also wanna thank my dad for helping me along the way. He definitely made it go a lot quicker and thanks to Finley for helping me film. See you guys in the next video. Have a great day. Yeah, day. have a great day. I think your screen's filthy.